Two weeks to go until the Veil Guard releases. Who is excited? Hello? Anyone? Please? That is basically the story of this game. It is about to release, and still no one cares. There's no more excuses from Copers that, oh, it's months out. That's the reason no one's talking about it. Just wait until release time. Everyone's going to be jumping off the walls excited for this. No excuses. It's about to release, and yet no one gives a toss whatsoever. I was actually thinking that we might see a little surge injection of enthusiasm after the previews did the rounds, when EA flew content creators out to check out the Veil vale Guard, have a bit of a play, I thought that there would be at least a bit of interest, but that hasn't panned out. And when you think about it, it's very easy to understand why. And that's even outside the obvious. Like, it looks like propaganda. The character models look absolutely atrocious. The mobile phone, sort of fortnite art style... That doesn't feel organic whatsoever. It doesn't even just feel corporate. Like the bosses at EA said, make it look more like Fortnite or Marvel or whatever it might be. It feels like the devs were ideologically driven to make this look like shit. Like that is basically their political ideologies to make things look bad. That owns the chuds, owns the gamers or whatever they say. That's basically their worldview. But when you think about it, the perception of this game has always been it looks terrible, it's probably going to play terrible as well. The positive previews came out from the content creators. And we'll be generous and say they were positive. I know there were some mixed ones, but let's say they were, were mostly positive. They come out, it doesn't really change anyone's mind. Like, who was influenced? by the content creators saying it was pretty decent, it maybe exceeded expectations because everyone thought it was going to be absolutely terrible, it was going to be atrocious, they said it was alright, who actually changed their mind and said, you know what, I'm going to pre-order, or I'm definitely going to buy it day one, I'm going to jump in. I don't think anyone is saying that, because at the end of the day, the problem people have had with this game it hasn't been addressed, which is, the vibe is atrocious. This is not the Dragon Age that we want. In fact, it's not the video game that we want, period. It looks embarrassing. No one in their right mind wants to play something that looks like this. So when you think about it, it's honestly going to be a good thing if this releases and it's actually a pretty solid game, but no one wants it anyway. Like, this is going to show developers... You need to make something that isn't ideologically driven. You just need to make a, a cool game in every area. It doesn't matter if your RPG systems are all right, the combat serviceable, the story functions, if you ignore all of the propaganda aspects. Even if you've got sort of a, a solid enough core game, if it's been built from the ground up to only really appeal and be targeted towards people who the developers feel share their worldview, their ideology and it tries to kind of punish anyone who disagrees with them in the real world, when you do that, your game is going to fail, regardless if, if some aspects of it are decent, are solid. I really think that's going to be the lesson of this game, because there's been plenty this year where you've had all this coping going on, where, like, Concord fails miserably. We all know why, and there's been plenty of these, plenty of examples. We know why they fail, because a normal person, they take one look at them, and they are embarrassed to go anywhere near it. But then the excuses start of, oh, no, it failed because of the market, for the cost of living, maybe. There were too many looter shooters in the drama already. That's why it failed. They ignore blatantly the elephant in the room, and they seem to get away with this. The mainstream narrative is, oh, it failed for all these other reasons. Not because it looked like something that you would give to prisoners of war to punish them. And I really think that's going to be the story of the Veil vale Guard. It's going to release. It's going to do critically decently because, like, the, the reviewers, they share in what the developers love. They love this worldview. They got into games journalism. They see it as a way to re-educate their readers. You're toxic. You're bad. You're evil. Then everyone stops reading, the website shuts, the writer gets fired, surprise, Pikachu face. But that aside, the game itself will probably review pretty well. 
I even think the people who play it day one, they buy it, they'll probably enjoy it as well. It will likely have very positive reviews on Steam. Some of those might be genuine. People actually play it. They like it. They'll, of course, be the people. They spend two hours in the character creator, and it's the best game ever because, oh, I, I can create myself in the game. Green hair, not slim, not slim at all. I could totally be myself. 10 out of 10 game Dragon Age is back. There'll be a lot of that, but I still think with those metrics being hit, players who buy it liking it, critical reviews being positive, it's still going to fail miserably because when you make a game that looks and feels unappealing, you're just not going to break through. Normal people, they're never going to buy it. It's never going to be like the game that everyone's talking about. The Baldur's Gate 3, the Elden Ring, where it is the flavor of the month. This doesn't have that. Again, the buzz is not there. And I think the second part to this is that EA just have no confidence in this product. Because just go back to those positive previews from the content creators. That was when Bioware EA had a chance to maybe change the narrative a little bit get people excited about the game, do a marketing blitz. They didn't. It's been radio silent for like two weeks. There's been no talk. The only article I've really seen about the Veil Guard with new information is something about there being no spiders in the game because someone was concerned about their arachnophobia and then Bioware calmed them down and said, don't worry, we don't need to put a, a no spiders accessibility feature in the game. There's no spiders in the title to begin with. Hooray. So that was literally the only piece of new information. There's been no real marketing. And I really think it just is that EA don't want to invest in this. They can see a mile away, it's just going to be a flop. They've been following the market this year. All of these titles totally failing. When the vibe of them is totally tragic, they suck. And they just don't want to waste their money and have a $400 million hole in the ground like Sony did with Concord. So I think that they've cut the marketing very short. It may even be that the reason that the game is native on Steam and it's not part of the EA app is because they think, well, what's the point? Let's just try and get as much money as possible, limit the controversies where we can, hopefully make our money back, and then let's just put Bioware out to pasture, let's get rid of them. That could happen. I don't see how Bioware survive if this flops. This had to be their comeback. And no one has faith. Everyone is losing faith. Even the, the handful of super fans that you find, they don't care. Starting off, global sellers list, just an update. Good news for Bioware, they've cracked the top 100 games sold on Steam. They've, they've beaten that little metric. Number 51, the bad news is they haven't cracked the top 50, so they've peaked as far as I can tell at 51. Now this will go up when the game actually comes out, but it's still massively underperforming. For instance, I noticed that like Elden Ring at full price is still selling better despite being two years old than the Veil Garb, which comes out in, in a couple of weeks. That just seems kind of weird. I think most people interested in, in Elden Ring would own it by now. And you look at something like Dragon Ball Sparkling Zero, it's doing very well. I think positive word of mouth is definitely helping it. But a few weeks from release, this was pretty close to the top 10. And it wouldn't have had even close to the budget of the Veil vale Guard, which had like six years development. So the charts still aren't looking very good for it. Also, this article, like the, the fans behind it, corporate games, media, they're already creating the narrative. Of, yes, the game's going to fail, but not for the reason that you think. No, no, no. It's not because of DEI, woke stuff, or whatever you want to say. Definitely not. It's something else. You can see it in the article title. Dragon Age the Veil vale Guard represents everything wrong with the games industry, just not for the reason that you might expect. And the expert who's telling us all this, it's this character here on the right. Surely you would trust this person to be objective here. Surely, if they're saying the game didn't fail for DEI reasons, they definitely did it. They're, they're totally an honest actor. And what they say here is, the game has become very representative of the turmoil of the industry, says Fox Zarrow, an assistant teaching professor of game design at Northeastern University. Oh, so this person is teaching devs future games that we're going to play. This person is coaching the developers. Oh, the industry is truly in safe hands. And she says the story behind the game's troubled development, executive staff turnover, Multiple significant shifts in creative vision, prolonging development, layoffs, even a name change, 
Uh, it's interesting because before we saw how bad the game looks now, I, I was very concerned about all these things. Like, I, I assumed the game was going to be garbage based on the development hell. And that was before I saw, like, the new art style and the new tone and everything that we didn't really know about until, I think, June. So, pretty late in the development cycle. It was already looking like a train wreck. And it's a, a checklist of the worst parts of big-budget AAA game development, she says. If it's struggling, if it's received very, very poorly, my only hope is that it is seen as a symptom of the industry and not because it turns out there was no Bioware magic. So before the game even comes out, they're already trying to paint this narrative that no, the game hasn't failed because it looks so unappealing you don't want to go anywhere near it. And they've done that on purpose for ideological reasons. They can't have that because if it becomes a reality that the industry and players all accept, that when you propagandize games, you try and turn them into modern day politics simulator. If it was accepted by everyone that that's a bad thing, all these developers, journalists, they'd all be out on their ass. So they're, they're fighting for their jobs, basically, and they even try and make us feel sorry for them all the time. I don't care. I want all of these people out. So it's a good thing if this game fails and fundamentals of the game are solid enough, but it only fails... Because of what we've seen, these people injecting their worldview into every little aspect of the title, that's going to be the best thing. They'll have nowhere to hide. We'll all know why it failed, and the industry needs to know it. So just another example of Clown World. Even the supposed fans, again, you can count them on one hand. This is meant to be like a countdown here on Reddit, the Dragon Age Reddit. 16 days until release. Who's excited? Who's with me? You read the comments, it's stuff like, I was going to buy Veilguard, but I got Metaphor, which is a, a recent JRPG instead, and don't think I'll, I'll put that down anytime soon, so they don't seem to be buying the Veilguard. I can barely contain my excitement, but I also find it really weird how Bioware marketing has gone dead silent. So even the super fans are acknowledging it's kind of weird, the marketing is just dead, like there's no budget for it. Like EA, know it's going to fail and they don't want to waste their money. EA have totally given up on this studio, on this game. Pretty similar on Steam. I mean, this has been the case for a while. Every single thread is shitting on it. And I'd expect that for like a sweet baby ink game that's like indie, doesn't have an audience. But to see this for what was once a beloved franchise, it's finally back after 10 years. It's pretty embarrassing. It's pretty just sad for Dragon Age. And there's, I think there's three, maybe four people defending the game out of thousands and thousands that I've managed to track down. It took a lot of research to find these people, but here's one of the threads, someone, a defender of the game. Dear Dragon Age Vanguard development team, I just want to take a moment to say thank you for the incredible work you've done in Dragon Age Vanguard. I'm such a fan, such a fan that they've got the name pretty close. Especially for adding representation and diversity in such a meaningful way. The inclusion of gender reassignment surgery scars, customizable pronouns, and representation of all minorities is really something that makes this game stand out, and it means a lot to players like me. Your effort to reflect a wide range of experiences and identities in the game world doesn't go unnoticed. Features like this make the game more inclusive and help create a space where everyone can feel seen and respected. It's clear you've made a real effort to make sure players from different backgrounds have the opportunity to see themselves in the characters they create and interact with. I've seen some of the, the characters that you can create in this title. If you're identifying with them, if you see yourself in, in some of the atrocities that people are making, I do feel sorry for you. I can understand why you might be questioning your identity, your, your gender, all sympathy to you. There was one other person, and this person, there's a... 2,000 page thread it looks like or there's 2,000 comments and there's one person arguing with everyone else there's one person defending the game everyone else is speaking common sense I mean like no this really doesn't look very good but this I'll give credit to this person they they do not give up and here's one of their comments they say with launch day coming you'll see a lot of people picking this up or buying their first Dragon Age I honestly don't think that almost anyone is going to be playing this game as their first Dragon Age. If you had no interest in the series and you look at this, 
you're just going to be laughing. You're going to play something else. You're not going to be even slightly inclined. Almost everyone who's going to buy this is buying it for the name recognition. They're nostalgic about Dragon Age, given it hasn't had an entry for a long time. In my opinion, not really a good entry for like 15 years. That's the only reason they're buying it. In fact, it might be part of why EA killed the marketing budget. Because it's like, well, we know where the customer base is coming from for this game. So why spend any extra money? It's just going to be people who are already fans. You're not going to build a new audience. It's not going to happen when it looks like crap. If it releases with combat like in Origins, I know most of those new players likely would refund or they wouldn't get very far. The series needs to modernize. That old style of combat just wouldn't work in today's world. It's an interesting comment, but it only works in a bizarro world where Baldur's Gate 3 doesn't exist. In fact, if BG3 never happened, then I think Bioware would have had an argument, a decent argument to say, no, no, turn-based RPGs, they're never going to do AAA numbers, those sorts of sales numbers. That no longer works. Like, Baldur's Gate 3, incredibly successful, turn-based combat. They should have done it. Everyone knows it, and maybe if they did, you wouldn't be the only person left defending it. And we'll end with one more comment from this person, where they say... Can't wait to support Concord when it returns as a free-to-play game. Just because all these people keep mentioning and hating on it, I'll support this game. This is the audience that Bioware has brought in, captivated. Concord fans, that is all that is left. There is no buzz. No one is talking about this game except for me, sadly. The game's going to come out, and then it's just going to be TikTok, will Bioware survive? That is going to be the real question, because I don't think this game is going to succeed whatsoever. Thanks for listening. I'll see you on the next one. Cheers. Bye.